Tonight's story is called Rest in Peace Tom Dooley and it's by Mary Weld from Clane, County Kildare. It's 1958 and the big treat after the rosary every night is to be allowed to tune in to Radio Luxembourg for an hour before going to bed. A song by the Kingston Trio had a chorus that insidiously invaded our heads. Our Father, Hail Mary, Glory be! It was always a relief to arrive at the fifth mystery of the nightly rosary, and for two reasons in particular. Our nearly numbed knees could finally be prized from the cold polished linoleum floored parlour for another 24 hours. And even more important, Radio Luxembourg, the Station of the Stars, would shortly be turned on for an hour before going to bed. Tuning in was a procedure in itself. Swirling the button along the wavelengths was so funny. We would get snatched sounds from a number of stations and we could, until we could finally hear the voice of Horace Batchelor advertising his infra-draw method, which was, believe it or not, a system he had worked out to win money by predicting the results of football matches. He would ask people to send him their name and address only to Department 1 Canesham, spell K-E-Y-N-S-H-A-M, Bristol. We knew then we were tuned into Radio Luxembourg. Oh, what fun we would have singing along to the hits of Elvis, Jerry Lee Lewis, Buddy Holly, Bobby Darren, Chuck Berry, Pat Boone and Frankie Avalon, to name but a few. They sang about Peggy Sue, Johnny B. Good and Billy, but the one that gripped our imaginations like no other was the ballad about Tom Dooley, sung in 1958 by the Kingston Trio. This catchy tune was about a man who was convicted and hanged for the murder of his girlfriend in 1868. I still remember every word of it. The chorus went like this. Hang, your he- hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Hang down your head and cry. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Poor boy, you're gonna die. I don't know what it was about Tom Dooley, but we were definitely besotted by him. The ballad was all the time running through our heads. While walking home from school or helping mummy around the house, or even when lending a hand to dad with the animals in the farmyard, we bellowed out the words of Tom Dooley. If we heard a knock on the door, we would smartly say, it must be Tom Dooley. Or if something would not be found, we would blame Tom Dooley for taking it. We often asked Daddy if he met Tom Dooley when he was selling pigs at the farm, or even would remind Mummy to buy some extra broken biscuits in the shop for our special friend. It all became very silly, really, and I don't know how our parents put up with us for so long. Of course, It would only be a matter of time before it would all end badly. One day, my dad was having a particularly difficult time as he tended to a sow giving birth to her piglets. She was very cross and restless and he knew she would probably try to eat some of her piglets if they came anywhere near her mouth. He kept watch on one side of the farrowing crate and I kept watch on the other and we pulled the piglets back if they were wandering into the danger zone of the sow's mouth. The heat from the infrared lamps was ferocious and the squeals from the sow were deafening. It was a big litter of piglets and thankfully we were nearly there when suddenly we heard a loud roar from my brother as he ran from the house down the yard. Daddy, Daddy, come quickly, he shouted. You're wanted on the phone. It sounded extremely urgent. Wiping his hands with straw and uttering a string of expletives, Dad ran from the shed and at the same time warned me to keep the piglets safe. I was nervous to be left on my own, but it had to be done. In a tormented voice, Dad asked my brother, Who wants me on the phone? Accompanied with a big, loud laugh, my brother said, Tom Dooley! joke was finally over. It was over for us all. I can tell you, Tom Dooley was firmly put to rest in our house that day. His name 
is never mentioned again. Rest in peace, Tom Dooley, and thanks for the memories. Good night, everybody, and stay safe.